In this lecture, we're going to learn how we can build two timers for work and for break and switch between them. Before we jump into this video, go to training.mammothinteractive.com. Here you can sign up for the Mammoth Unlimited membership and get access to all of the courses we've ever created. That's over 2,000 hours of content. So at the top of our content view file here, we can see we have time remaining. Now we are going to add a couple more variables here. Let's have a state variable for work time remaining and let's set that to five seconds for testing. Then let's have a state variable for break time remaining and we'll set that to three seconds. So we'll have a five minute work period and a three minute break period just for testing right now. Of course you can make those as large or as small as we wanted. Okay so here this time remaining is 62 but this is actually going to be dependent on are we at work time remaining or are we at break time remaining? So I'm going to call this instead time to show and I'm going to begin it at five. So this is going to be the time that we're always showing. It will start at five, but then if we're on break time, it should switch to starting at three. If we're on work time, it should switch to starting at five. So how can we implement that? Well, what we're going to do is use some conditional statements inside of our view. So we'll actually need one more variable and here I am going to have a state variable again because all of these are going to update and I am going to set this to time to work and set this to true. This will be true if it is time to work. If I'm currently working it will be false if it is not time to work or if I'm currently on a break. Okay so here we can just wait a moment and our error messages will disappear. And now let's implement and put to use these variables. So here inside of our body, we don't have time remaining anymore. We have time to show. Okay, so we can remove our calls to time remaining and use time to show instead. We can refresh our preview here and we'll see our time to show was five. So we're going to start off with five seconds and there it is in our preview. Then inside of the on receiving of the timer, so every second, instead of just reducing time to show, we are going to put to use our two timers, our work timer versus our break timer. So we are going to check if it is time to work. That means I should use my work timer. So my time to show should equal my work time remaining. Okay, and that is still going to be five because our work time remaining starts at five. Okay, I can press play on the preview. This time we actually have it frozen at five because we're never decreasing any value, but we will shortly. Okay, what we'll do is we'll take work time remaining and we'll decrease it by one. Okay, because we want the timer to still work. So if I press my preview, that will launch the timer. Okay, great. So now our work timer is working, but what if we reach zero? Well, after we reach zero, we want to go to a break. So here I'm actually going to add a check. I'm going to check if my work time remaining is greater than zero. Only then am I going to put the logic for the work timer. Okay, because once the work time remaining equals something else, then we can use an else statement here. That means that it's no longer time to work. If my work time remaining is equal to zero or less than zero, then my time to work I should set to equal false. And I am going to reset my work time remaining to equal the initial state, which we can make a variable work period length. Okay, so we can make a variable or a constant that doesn't have to be a state at the top here. We can create this called work period length and that will be equal to five as well because we have to reset it somehow and we don't want to use this work time remaining. Okay, we want to make sure all of our numbers are inside of variables or constants. Okay, so here we can refresh our preview and what we're doing here is checking if work time remaining is greater than zero, then we are going to set the time to show to be the work time remaining and we'll decrease the work time remaining. 
Otherwise, if we've run out of the work timer, then we want to set time to work to equal false. And we want to set our work time remaining to equal the work period length. Okay, let's see if we have any issues. We can refresh our preview to make sure everything is working as expected. Okay, great, it is. All right, so there here we have our check now. What if it is not time to work? Because currently, let's say I press play. Currently, if I reach zero, my timer is just going to stop. So here I can see I reach zero and it just stops. Okay, it freezes at one because if time to work is false, it's never going to decrease anything. So I want to add a check for what if it is not time to work. So we have this if statement for if it is time to work, but what if it is not time to work anymore? Well, if it's not time to work, then we have that else statement. That means it's time for a break. So I am going to here change this. So I'm going to change my time to show to equal the break time remaining. And then I'm going to have a check here if break time remaining is less than zero. But for now, we can keep this as just reducing it, break time remaining. We should reduce break time remaining by one. Okay, so now we can test out our preview. Here we have our work timer. We start at five. We go all the way down to zero, at which point we go to three because that is our break time. When the break timer is over, we start to go into negatives because we have to check this. Okay, so here what I'm going to add a check for is when I reach zero. So I'm going to check if my break time remaining is greater than zero. Then we should move our logic here because it means we're currently in break time. But if break time reaches zero, then we'll have an else statement. And we're going to set time to work back to true because if our break timer runs out, it means it's back to work. And we want to reset our break time remaining variable as well to the break period length. So we do have to create a constant or a variable that is called the break period length, which we'll set to three just for testing. Okay, great, so we just did the same thing that we did for the work timer, we just did it for the break timer. Now, if we test out our preview here, we can refresh the preview and wait for it to load with our changes. Then we can press play to interact with this. Okay, sometimes you can get a quit, just press okay. All right, that can happen when you are coding new variables. So let's just let the preview update. We can press try again as well if it prompts us to do so. Great, now the preview is ready. We can press play on the preview. Okay, we begin at the work timer. It starts at five and starts counting down. When the work timer ends, then we switch to the break timer, okay? When the break timer ends, look at that. We go back to the work timer. Thanks for watching and don't forget to go to training.mammothinteractive.com. Here you can sign up for the Mammoth Unlimited Membership where you can get access to over 350 courses that we've created.